<laughs> I always gotta ask that because I was I look in the camera like, yeah, I don't like how I look. <laughs> Just don't make me look. Don't make, me look, don't make me look small next to you. Hey, you know? look, man. If I look big, right. it's a little bit. <laughs> it's not for the right reasons. I can tell you that. What's going on, DRP family? We're back. We're rolling. I know it's been some crazy times with COVID, but the DRP talks never stops. All right, we're back. For my new viewers out there. My name is Donald Russell, owner of DRP Fitness and Health. And today, we're gonna to be meeting with one of my guys, Dr. Jeff Hart. He's a doctor of physical therapy. And if you haven't been watching any of the other videos, I get a chance to talk with different business owners that's in the fitness and health field. And we just go over some of the things that just help, whether it's recovery, rehab, performance, whether we're working with athletes or just the general population, however we can help or however we can bring more of the fitness and health business owners out and together, these are what these videos are for. So stay tuned. I got some great stuff coming for you. What's going on, DRP family? We here with my guy, Dr. Hart. He's a doctor of physical therapy. We're gonna go over a few things, mainly the shoulders. I know we have some restrictions out there, some pains, a lot of people have some injuries. We're gonna go over a few things that can help us with recovery, rehab, and just trying to help us on a day-to-day basis. So Dr. Hart, what are some of the things that you've seen as far as injuries or, or some of the restrictions yeah. that you've seen from some people? So a lot of things that I see in, you know, most just people in general, you know, a lot of, a lot, you know, people who are athletes, people who are not, is we see a lot of you know, issues with their posture. Absolutely. And so the big thing is, that, you know, working postural exercises, making sure that certain muscles don't get too tight, you know, and certain muscles don't get weak, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you see a lot of tendonitis, you know, people who are really active, uh, you know, maybe not doing things with the proper form, but a lot of tendonitis, which can turn into tendinosis, which can get pretty bad, you know, some chronic injuries going on there. Um, you know, we see some rotator cuff tears here and there, you know, pretty, you know, mild to severe. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we also see uh, some labral tears, you know, when people get excessive range of motion, uh, people are doing some Olympic lifting, you know, we can see a lot of those things where, you know, we can even see some dislocations too, which is rare, but can happen as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, would you say the people would have to watch out on is should we focus more on the range of motion more so just trying to work mm -hmm. just completely strength because I've done that with a few of my clients I like to work more range of motion mm -hmm. and, and mobility yeah. versus me mm -hmm. just trying to get the, the strength you know oh, yeah. stronger yeah, yeah yeah no I mean trying to pack on exactly too much muscle. exactly so I mean it's, it's kind of pointless to have a ton of strength without the mobility right mm -hmm. so I mean it makes sense you know if we have that full range of motion we're gonna be able to contract the muscle better mm -hmm. Really, the muscle is going to get more activated, and we're also going to, you know, be safer. Mm -hmm. You know, so when we're doing things like in life, you know, we're always reaching, you know, further. Or we're doing things like that. You know, if the muscle is, is elongated and strong in the full range, it's going to be a lot safer. Okay, gotcha. So, yeah. with some restrictions that I have today, what are some of the things that we'll be working on yeah. today? You know, what are we yeah. looking at? I said we got some yeah. dry needling. Yeah, coming. we're going to do some dry needling for sure today. Oh my so, goodness! I that, never wait. had it done. <laughs> never had it done before. So we're going to try some dry needling. Yeah. Uh, you know, so in Florida, it just became legal um, last July. And so, um, you know, it's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen before, you know, coming from the strength and conditioning field as well, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being uh, somewhat of an athlete myself, at least trying to be, mm -hmm. not, not quite like you, but kind, <laughs> but kind of, you know, still, still trying to be like you. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's one of the things that it, it's really effective. You know, we'll kind of get into a little more of that later. Uh, we might get into some grasping, you mm -hmm. know, uh, as well as some cupping. So we can kind of oh. see how you do, maybe some joint mobilization, you know, see how his shoulders move, see if mm -hmm. uh, the capsules loose and kind of all that, and kind of go from there. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, we're going to be checking out my flexibility. Do not laugh at me. <laughs> Don't laugh. Just at don't me. look at mine. <laughs> mine's probably way worse than his. All right, guys, we're gonna get poking today. Yep. So what I want to do with you first, have a seat. Oh. So we're gonna look at your shoulder mobility. Exactly. So what I always like to do is take like a pre and a post. Mm -hmm. So I want you to start nice and straight, and we're just gonna look at your flexion, uh -huh. uh, both arms, and then we'll look at your abduction. Gotcha. And then we'll do what's called like an Apley's test, which is like a behind the back. Ooh, which that's what you mean. I'm terrible at. It's yeah, it's, it's, it's very very so any and as a bodybuilder, it's, it's embarrassing. Yeah, that's yeah, what you mean. It's, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> so put the, put this right arm out in front. Right. Don't let it come out at all. Keep okay. it right there and don't don't put don't don't like force it. Okay. I just want to see how far you can move it. Go straight up as hard as you can and just stop with any restriction. Okay. All right, good. And then this one out to the side. Same thing. Just kind of go up as far as it can right without any real restriction. Once you feel like it, it kind of gets stuck. Okay. All right, same thing here. Let's go out to the side first. Yeah, that one. Go ahead. So once you feel it kind of sticks, that one's all better. You can already tell. Jeez. We don't, yeah, it's yeah, like one side's always a little better, right? And then this one too. That one's way better. Yeah, so you're, you're actually left. So, I mean, just from looking at you, yeah. this side's a lot more restricted. Mm -hmm. You right-handed? Yeah, right-handed. Yeah, yeah. So let's just mean what we can do too. Normally we do like a little strength assessment. I know you're very mm -hmm. strong, but we'll just kind of look at it real quick. Gotcha. Kind of hold it there for me. Don't mm -hmm. let me push you down. Push, push, push. Good. Bring it here. 
Hold it there. You ever get any pain with anything? No. Like pressing or nothing like that? No, no, no. pressing. Okay, I good. get a weird pain when I'm doing some, uh, like if I'm doing a tricep movement, mm -hmm. I'll down. get it more like in the lower trap area. Like down here? Yeah, on like it's yeah. all on the right side. So I'm yeah. gonna, any tricep push down, mm -hmm. do single arm or whatever, yeah. and I'll get it literally like really? right behind the scapula. It's, it's so weird. That is weird with a tricep though. Hold yeah. it there. That's really strange with that. Hold it there. Good. All right. I'm like, why do yeah. I feel in like rumble? It's last. I'm like, what, what, yeah, like why would, why would I feel like yeah, when like, my shoulders like, doing just extension? Like why would I feel it there, yeah, right? I don't yeah, that. yeah. All right. So, so basically, you know, I'm gonna look for some trigger points. Mm -hmm. You know, any area that's tender. You know, we can look for some latent trigger points. If you have what's called like an active trigger point, mm -hmm. it would, you know, be very localized, and you would feel it with or without movement. Does gotcha. that make sense? Yeah. If it's latent, you know, if I poke it, you might get a referral pattern with that. Gotcha. You know, you know when someone finds a spot on you and you're like, ooh, that's tender. Yeah, that's tender, yeah. yeah that would be more like a latent trigger point if you didn't know it was there. Mm -hmm. And we kind of poke it and find it. So, like, that's probably tender. Looking and a lot, a lot of times, too, in the infraspinatus, right through here is really tender. Mm -hmm. So, kind of rotator cuff muscles we're kind of looking through. Some people get some in the, uh, the levator, which kind of attaches to the like, top of the shoulder blade there. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people are really tight kind of in the rhomboids. You're not too bad in the rhomboids. What we could definitely do, though, is we could try some needling through the multifidi, mm -hmm. which are, you know, some of the, the deep muscles there in the spine, right, kind of really all the way down in there. Gotcha. So you, you can't get those without needling. Yeah. You know, I can't do grass intercupping deep enough for you to feel that. Absolutely. So that's going to be some of the things we want to look at. Gotcha. So we will dive into that shortly. But yeah, so basically we just want to kind of figure out where you're tight. Obviously the traps are pretty tight mm -hmm. and all of us guys they are, you know, so all the training you're doing. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll kind of find some good tre treatment zones and we'll dive right into it. All right, so um, this, this right shoulder was like kind of the problematic area. Yeah. So that's the area I want to address a little more, okay? okay? So I'm just going to clean your shoulder. This is chlorhexidine. So like they use like this or uh, iodine like for surgeries. So if I go inside the shoulder joint, you know, to make sure that it's clean. Okay. So with, with some good stuff. So I'm just going to kind of open that up a little bit. So how often do people do dry needling? You know, so most of my clients, like if they're coming in kind of like for maintenance, you know, I'll see them maybe every 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 week, you know, give or take uh, every every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone has like a real like a real injury, the most I would needle them is probably twice a week. Mm -hmm. You know, but everyone's a little different, so it really depends on their tolerance. You know, I'd say most of my clients have never had an issue um, with needling them a couple times in a week, but mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't do it more than more than three. Mm -hmm. You know, because it could be a little little shock to the system. It could be a little you know, cause too much you know trauma or stress. Mm -hmm. You know, so we don't want to overdo it if we don't have to. So what we're going to do first, I'm going to get into the multifidi. Okay. Uh, it's going to open up the thoracic spine really well. This is one of like the best treatments that I've seen, um, you know, for kind of opening up the back. You know, we, everyone gets really tight through here. Mm -hmm. So I like to open this up a lot. Everyone feels a lot of relief with that. So it's definitely something that's you know, really safe to do. Mm -hmm. And it's just really effective. So basically, I just kind of find the spine here, spine this process. And I go just slightly lateral to that. And I kind of go on a downward uh, angle. So that's the first one. This is gonna go all the way, you okay? Yeah. And so it's gonna feel kind of weird. Muscles might twitch with you, I expect them to. And I'm kind of aiming to hit the bone. So I, I'm on your bone, right oh, there. Wow. Feel that? So that's basically come kind of kind of going like in a, in, an inferior medial direction. So I'm kind of aiming like towards your butt and then towards the midline. Mm -hmm. That's kind of I'm going to go downward on that angle. So all I do is just kind of find that, that part right there and go just slightly lateral to it, kind of right in there. And try to get over the top of you. You know, so what's underneath this area? If I go to, if I miss, uh -huh. what do you think? Any idea? Has to be this. Has to be the spine, right? Well, the spine's protected, right? Spinal cord's gonna be protected. If I go straight in there, oh, so you straight in there, you have to go for the ribs or just the lats in general. So right? what? What area? What, what's dangerous that I hit though? Ooh. Any idea? How about your lungs? Ooh. Ooh, we don't want to do that, do we? Ooh, I didn't even think about it. Don't want about a pneumothorax, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of what we're looking to do, is just kind of get deep in there. But, you know, your your vertebrae is going to protect you. Mm -hmm. So I'm hitting the sides of it. So you have these parts on the side there that are going to protect you. So it makes it it's pretty easy to do. I just kind of get over the top. And I know that if my middle finger here is on your spine, mm -hmm. I know if I'm a half inch away from that, mm -hmm. then I, you know, I'm in a safe zone. You know, and if I'm ever not sure, I, I wouldn't do it. This is an area I've found super, super effective on a lot of people. So we'll probably put five on each side. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so about 10 total, we'll do 10 to start. You know, see, because I don't, you know, first time doing it, I don't want to overdo it. I know you can handle it just fine, but we don't want to overdo it. So we'll do five on each side here. And then we'll kind of get into some of that right shoulder since that was the kind of a little more of that problem area. Mm -hmm. And so you will be amazed how much better that shoulder feels after you're done. So it's pretty remarkable. 
You okay? Yeah. It's funny, but it's a weird feel. It, it is, but isn't it? It's not painful at all. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. yeah you so can just feel the muscle. You feel you like feel something's there, there, but you don't know like what it is or where yeah. it is. Yeah. It's a very interesting feeling. There's no question about that. But you know, I'm getting all the way into the tissue there, like where I want. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas if I was trying to do like, you know, cupping or Graston, there's no way I could physically push that hard to get there. Yeah. You know, so one of those things where, you know, it's, you know, if I can do something that's more effective, that's going to be the game plan, mm -hmm. right? You know, and every needle that you put into somebody, mm -hmm. it's going to be therapeutic in some way. You know, so if I ever kind of miss a spot, you know, I'm going to leave that needle in and I might go and just put another one in the, the, the right area. Yeah, absolutely. And everyone's anatomy is a little different. You know, so if you're, as long as you're in some safe spots, you're, you know, you know, kind of know your anatomy, you know, you're going, like, you could just be off by, you know, you know, half a centimeter, mm -hmm. and a millimeter. You could be off just by the tiniest little bit, which is fine. You know, but you just kind of want to find those good treatment zones. You want to go in there, you know, but any area you need to, it's going to, you know, accelerate the healing process. It's going to yeah. promote healing no matter where you put it. You know, some spots are more, a lot more sensitive than others. So think about your hands and your feet, right? You know, we have a lot of nerves there, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you get a uh, paper cut or you stub your toe, hurts like hell. Yeah. You know, whereas like you do the same thing to, you know, your thigh, doesn't matter. You don't feel it really. So. There's a lot of treatments you can do for the hand, mm -hmm. you know, or the feet, things like that. We treated someone with gout before, you know, actually really helped his big toe out. Oh, wow. Not during a flare up, obviously, yeah. but um, you know, you, there's a lot of things you can treat, you know, believe it or not, you know, with, with needling, which is really cool. So there's 10 right in the kind of the multifidi, mm -hmm. okay? So there's 10 right there. So the next thing I want to do is I want to put some in the, the shoulder here, okay. okay? So all I'm going to do now is kind of feel for your shoulder blade and try to find some good areas there to kind of treat in the shoulder blade. So, you know, basically if I find a little, kind of some knot, you know, some good treatment zones, I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna poke it. So. Now, now it would depend on the muscle type of who you're dealing with, right? Yeah. And you know, you know, there's a lot of contraindications or kind of like questionable things you would treat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if someone has certain comorbidities, you know, we have a big list that you saw. You know, if there's a big list of things, you know, we'd want to be careful. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone was pregnant, I would never needle them no matter what. Yeah, you know, because, you, know, you know, we're not doing acupuncture. Mm -hmm. So this has nothing to do with your, your chi or your meridians or any, any type of energy. You know, it's strictly from like a myofascial standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, yeah, there's certain things you would never treat, you know, never needle. If someone's on a blood thinner, you mm -hmm. know, you need to be really cautious. Mm -hmm. You know, you might just have, you know, some people bleed when we do it or when the needles come out. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times they don't. But, you know, if someone did... Um, you just might have to put your finger on the area and hold it a little longer, Yeah. you know? So that would be like one thing you need to be concerned about or, you know, some clients get a lot of bruising, not a big deal. You know, it's, if someone's, you know, fine with having some bruises, it's still gonna be effective. So, you know, we're trying to get any area that's tight or restricted, just to open it up some more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the plan. How are we doing so far? So far, so good, I like it. Good. I, my favorite by far is doing multifidi. Yeah. Kind of like in between shoulder blades there, because I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna get into the rhomboid obviously and go through that mm -hmm. and get into the multifidi. You know, so you're gonna get like a really good release and all that, which is pretty cool. Any areas that are like more sensitive than others when I put them in or not too bad? Not too bad. Yeah. Somewhere, I would say more so mm -hmm. in the rhomboid area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt it just a little bit. Yeah. But it's just more so not a painful feeling, just a yeah. weird feeling. Mm -hmm. Do you feel this? Slightly. So I'm poking your shoulder blade. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm actually like touching it. Yeah. yeah. It's a bone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and what's really interesting too is like a lot of times you're, you know, the skin will kind of tell you where to treat, mm -hmm. right? So what's really interesting is some of the areas that I've went in, if I put the guide tube on you, mm -hmm. and sometimes it'll stay there for like a long time. And so like, I don't know if you can zoom in on these two in here. There's two areas kind of in his infraspinatus that we went and see how the tube is still around those. Whereas like all these ones, there's no tube there or like this one's barely there. So these kind of areas, you know, tells me those are good treatment zones. Cause a lot of times these, these issues manifest themselves in the skin or eventually it'll come from that. Like we'll see it there. So any area that is, you know, really good treatment zone, this little ring will kind of stay around there, you know, while for, for a while, if you will. So, boom. so we're going to get one in the super spinatus here. So we're going to go right in there and we're going to kind of hit the, 
the spine of the scapula right there. And a lot of times too, what I like to do is I like to twist the needles. And so what happens when I twist them, you feel that a little bit? Just like, it's like yeah. a, a tickling feeling. Yeah, so what's really cool is I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you take, I'm gonna get, the, get a good view on the camera here. So basically what's really cool is if I twist these needles here and I try to pull this needle out, it kind of, you can see the needle doesn't want to go anywhere. Sometimes the fascia, like that one, the fascia is grabbing a hold of it. I spin them, see how it kind of grabs? So the, you know, basically the, the fascia is going to grab a hold of that needle. It kind of whirls up, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, uh, the needle there. And so what, over time, what happens is that that tissue will relax, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna, it's going to help kind of get some more range of motion in that area, loosen up that fascia oh, a lot better. Okay. Yeah, kind of opens up all that connective tissue a lot better. So since I have you here, and since you tell me a little bit about that tricep, it's, it's this side, right? With the tricep? Yeah, with the right side, yeah. yeah no. So I'm going to do actually a little treatment in, in the kind of, you know, into the shoulder, posterior delt a little bit. Uh, and also into the tricep a little more too. Kind of see how you do with some of that. You know, needles can stay in um, from anywhere from a few seconds or, you know, you could do 20 minutes okay. uh, or even, even up to 30. You know, you could do, usually the, the, the research um, that I've seen lately says if we're gonna do electrical stim in an area, it should be there for about 20 minutes mm -hmm. if we're gonna stim any needles. And so different needles can have either like plastic tips like these ones do, or if I'm gonna stim somebody, um, you know, they might have metal tips, which is fine. So either way, or I can just grab, um, you know, if I don't put the needle in all the way, mm -hmm. I can put it, um, I can just kind of put it at the base of that, that needle there and we can get, you know, so we're grabbing metal. Okay. Yeah. Got some big old shoulders here. Hey man, I try hey, to, man. I see that. I see that. I'm jealous, man. I gotta get shoulders like you. I'm working on the red dead pool. See that. Trying to widen these laps out too. Yeah. Hey, me too, man. <laughs> you and me both. You and me both. Now, right. for, for anybody who has other injuries as far as like knee. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, the knee's knee, the best. Hip, the knee's the best? Knee's the best. Yeah. So I've had actually had two ACL reconstructions mm -hmm. on my right knee because I'm special. It's awful. <laughs> if anyone's had an ACL surgery, it sucks. Period of story. Worst thing I've ever had. Um, hurts more than tearing a pec. I've torn my pec. Non-surgical. That hurts too. Um, but no, the ACL is probably, probably the most most painful thing I've ever seen. So a lot of people that get like even arthritis in their knee, mm -hmm. I can, uh, there's some areas I can, I can put the, the needles and actually stim it to kind of help with the pain of arthritis. Cause I'm going to get in, inside the joint actually, you know, so, you know, the knees are great. <clears throat> I do a lot of work around the knee, um, low back and glutes are probably the best too. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people that have just like some of that chronic low back pain or that tightness, but they sit a lot and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, usually doing the glutes is the best. I put a lot kind of in the low back. Ooh, you mm -hmm. okay there? Yeah. Hey, ticklish? Yeah, ticklish. So I do a lot in the low back and then we can also kind of get some the SI ligament too, which is mm -hmm. really good. And then we get in the piriformis and then we get kind of in the glute really good too, which, oh, is, which okay. is awesome. So a uh, lot bigger needles for that. Someone like, someone like you, uh, you know, with big butt, you know, big, those big old glutes, mm -hmm. we use probably a hundred millimeter needle instead of the 75. Oh. You know, so anyone who's a little bigger, we got to get a little more, uh, a little more depth usually, kind of, yeah. so we can hit the target we're going for. You know, if people have like, um, like for, you know, upper upper thigh pain or hip pain. Mm -hmm. You know, we can do uh, the adductors, get in the inner thigh a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, there's really no area I can't needle. I would never needle um, the diaphragm, mm -hmm. which is actually, so, and I'm sure you could do it with ultrasound. You know, there's certain areas you just never need a diaphragm. I wouldn't do intercostals in between the ribs because mm -hmm. the lung's too close and I don't know how far I'm going. You know, everyone, and everyone's different, you know. Certain areas you don't want to touch just because, you know, it's probably not ethical or safe. Um, but for, you know, I don't know, 90% of, 99% of all orthopedic issues that people come in with, you know, we can definitely needle them all, which is awesome. So, so you got about 20 needles in you, I think. Ooh. 20, I put 20 in you. So you have 10 here and then we have 10 kind of throughout uh, the shoulder complex, okay? Some of the delt, tricep, uh, infraspinatus, teres, kind of all through here. So these will kind of, we'll let these simmer a little bit. Gotcha. So usually, you know, first time, I might leave them in about 10 minutes. So we maybe leave it in about 10 more minutes or so, and then we'll kind of reassess at the end. And so <clears throat> a lot of times what we like to do at the end, uh, we might do some re-education. So we might, might load the shoulder joint, you know, with some weights, maybe do some rotator cuff exercise, mm -hmm. just to kind of lock in what we did and kind of teach the body how to move the right way with this new motion we're gonna get. Now, for people with shoulder injuries, I yeah. know for some, yeah. some people may not like uh, surgery or that may not yeah. be an option. Would you recommend dry needling? Oh, yeah. As kind so, of that replacement, not a replacement, but yeah. something to do. Like a rotator cuff tear mm -hmm. or, yeah, 100%. So like a lot of times people with uh, rotator cuff tears, right, like if it's a partial tear, mm -hmm. if we do, um, a lot of the research actually does show if it's a partial tear, it's actually going to heal, you know, pretty well um, or even heal completely 
uh, and do almost better than surgery if we just do the right things. Absolutely. Yeah, so I mean, um, um, if you kind of poke around the shoulder, if someone were to like scope the shoulder but not actually repair the shoulder, and you kind of just stir up some inflammation, the body, and you just go through like a protocol, like a, a rotator cuff protocol, it actually might heal pretty well. You know, mm -hmm. if we just stop irritating it, you know, we get out of pain, you know, we do the right things, you know, strengthen it, pain-free, maybe doing isometrics, um, you know, anything that we do without causing more, more pain or damage, it can actually heal itself. So it means very similar, like I, I tore my pec, uh, non-surgical right in the muscle belly. So if I had needling, um, what, six, seven years ago, that'd have been amazing. Mm -hmm. Put some needles in there, put some electrical stim on it, uh, do that a couple times a week, that would accelerate the rate of healing for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what we can do too is like if someone has, um, you know, some tears in the supraspinatus or you tear a rotator cuff and I put some needles in there with some stim, mm -hmm. instantly it's gonna accelerate the rate of healing. Mm -hmm. You know, we got a lot of good things in the body kind of help come to the area and help with healing. Um, you know, some neurotransmitters, cytokines, chemokines, all these, this cascade of good stuff, you know, mm -hmm. in the body kind of gets sent there. Uh, when we needle the area, especially with stim, you know, if we're gonna get more blood flow, it's gonna help with healing. So more, more blood flow is gonna be more nutrients. Things that's really cool too with the needling. So the whole, the whole premise is like, I wanna put you in a parasympathetic state mm -hmm. to kind of help promote healing, mm -hmm. right? You know, when you get a massage, you're tired afterwards, like same kind of thing. So a lot of times, like I'd say, more than half my clients, when we're done with the needling, they're always like, I feel, I feel like really tired. I feel sleepy. Like right? sluggish. Yeah. Almost, yeah. You know, because when do we heal? We heal when we're sleeping, right? Mm -hmm. Parasympathetic nervous system's activated. You know, our body's going to be in a more prime state to heal. If you're super stressed, are you going to heal? No. No, exactly, right? You know, like you get sick, you get ill when your stress hormones are through the roof, cortisol is flying around, mm -hmm. you know, and your body can't, you know, protect itself, right? Can't heal itself. So, you know, if there's ever a needle that goes in that hurts, you know, like, you know, these ones that I put in, obviously none of them really hurt you uh, or cause any problems. But if I put a needle in and it's in a spot and you're like, damn, this hurts. Like, yeah. ow, that hurts. Like, I, I take it out. I'll take it out. Because if you're stressed and uncomfortable, that's not good. I yeah. don't want that, right? I always want you to be in a, in a way, like a place that you can heal. Do you think this would be more of a rehab or recovery uh, situation that everybody would kind of lean to for a physical therapist or just doctors in general? You know, if, you know, depending on, depending on the patient, you know, from an athletic population, 100%, mm. 100%, you know, like if someone has good, good, like skin integrity, you mm. know, we can treat it well and like it's easy, you know, we can manage it and they're safe to needle, it's 100%. You know, um, you know, since I've worked with like a lot of professional bodybuilders, amateur bodybuilders, uh, men and women, mm. you know, this is one of the things that they love. Like it's, it's one of the things that people are, are just baffled by how well it works mm. and how good they feel afterwards. You know, and so, you know, if I need, if I, if I find a ligament that's really loose and I put a needle in it, it tightens it up, mm -hmm. but it automatically does that. If there's a ligament that's really tight and then I put a needle in it, loosens it up. Your body, you know, your body's goal is to find that homeostasis and balance itself, mm -hmm. you know, so the needling is really effective in kind of assisting in that. Like down here, like then your low back, mm -hmm. you have your SI ligament, um, your, your PSIS, that kind of your little dimple, like your butt bone, mm -hmm. like in this part. Um, you have them both sides, the SI ligament, you know, a lot of times people, especially women, it's like one's might, one, might, one might be loose, one might be tight, mm -hmm. then both might be loose. When I needle that area, it helps your low back out a ton. It's like my favorite area to treat in the low back. Yeah. Now you say somebody with a question for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Somebody whose hips aren't even, or mm -hmm. if they have any issues with, mm -hmm. hey, I always have some lower back issues. Yeah. For me, I'm always asking, mm -hmm. you know, what about the foot? Would you mm -hmm. say that it should it start from the ground up, or would you yeah. look into that straight area of where is the pain <clears throat> in the lower back? Both, both for sure. So you know, I want to know where the, where the pain's coming from. Like, is it is it local to like one spot? And what and then what's, what does it feel like? Is it like what what you know? How did it get there? What's it feel like? When is it there? What makes it better? What makes it worse? Right. So, <clears throat> you know, based off of someone's history, you know, I can kind of tell right away if it's going to be more muscular. Mm -hmm. Um, or it's kind of like maybe their hips are kind of offset a little bit, um, or if it's like a nerve issue, a disc issue. I mean, it's pretty easy to tell, mm -hmm. you know. So that that really depends right off the gate, but or right off the you know, right off the bat, um, you know. But I like to look at people's feet. You know, your feet tell us a lot. Yeah. You know, if someone's flat foot, if someone has a really high arch, um, if you know, you you can actually look at people's shoes um, and see kind of how their shoes are worn. Mm -hmm. You know, like on the outside of them and on the inside, you can look at the soles, um, just see where people are walking, how they're walking. You know, if someone's walking you know, on, you know, the wrong part of their foot or, you know, they're limping or one side's more worn than the other, we can tell, okay, there might be a problem that we need to look at. So whenever I'm dealing with the back, you know, we're gonna look at the back, look at the hips, the knees and the feet. Okay, feet, foot and ankle, yeah. You always wanna look at everything because you wanna treat the whole system, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I like to always look at the feet first, you know, see what their arches look like, see how they stand, 
Um, you can someone do a functional squat. You know, I don't care if you're, you know, a professional bodybuilder or your grandma. Let's see, can you squat? Because mm -hmm. I think squatting is super functional, right? Deadlifting, squatting, very mm -hmm. functional for anybody. And you got to pick up stuff off the floor. We got to sit in chairs. So I want to see what you can do, how you move functionally, and then, you know, obviously if they're not in pain, we don't want any pain when we're treating or, or we're examining anybody. But then we kind of just go from there. Start start somewhere and work your way up and down. Yeah. So we're gonna pull some of the needles out. Okay. Okay. So it's been been about 15 minutes. Okay. So good good treatment time. And so what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll kind of assess some mobility. Uh, then normally afterwards we'll kind of go through some strengthening and kind of some rotator cuff work. Gotcha. Kind of make sure we kind of lock in what we did. So like I said, some people do bleed. Um, most of the time they don't, but every once in a while it happens. So, so far, nothing. And if you do, we just have to put my finger on it and it just goes right away. All right, so what I want to do is we're going to take a look at uh, the shoulder mobility, okay? okay? Gotcha. Same, I want you to do the same exact thing you did. Uh, but, you know, so the, the left side was good. We had a great, great motion on the left, mm -hmm. okay? But I want to see how you do on the right today. Right side, so right. sit up nice and tall. Uh, remember, don't, you know, don't, don't push it. But yeah. Let's see how far you can go without. Can go, uh, lateral or forward? Let's go on uh, front first. Front yeah. Front. Mm -hmm. Far as you can go, keep going. You can go for a net. Net. Whoa. Like, wow. Okay. That's, net wild. It's no restriction. I know. Net cool. Isn't yeah. Wild. So let's do that to the side too, because you you stop pretty short on this one. Yeah. So go ahead and let's go up as high as you can go. <laughs> That's like... So it's funny. Every single time that I've needled somebody, we've done the shoulder. So yeah. I, I had a gentleman. He had a rotator cuff tear on his on his right shoulder. Uh, was kind of stuck right about here. Yeah. And then when we were done, clears all the way overhead, and he's like, "What'd you do to me?" Like, and yeah. it's it, it, it yeah. literally everyone's reaction when I when we do this at the end, they everyone everyone laughs or smiles because they're like they, they're just blown away. Like, I didn't stretch you, I didn't do some deep tissue work. Uh -huh. I just put a bunch of needles in you, that's and you're like, "What just happened?" Yeah. That's Isn't that crazy? Horrible. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just funny the restriction yeah. you don't have because I, I was literally. Right. About right. I can still see my. Oh, pinky. I'll 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 put them side by side yeah. for you. I'll, I'll I'll yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. still see my pinky when I was lifting up, and now it's you just can clear overhead. It's comfortable. I can literally clear my head. Wow. So now, what's the dangerous part about that? Yeah. Right. Right. In general, so like, let's say, let's say now, like you, let's say you've been restricted for a long time, which a lot of people at see are. They, you know, they haven't been able to move a certain way for a while, right? Uh -huh. So now, what would happen if you you did this and had this new range of motion, and then you go go train? With that, yeah. So you, your body doesn't know where this is. That yeah. new range of motion is like brand new, right? Mm -hmm. So your body would be like, oh, what, I don't know what to do. Like, and that could be an injured, injured area, right? It's like saying if you're used to benching, you know, from here to here, or you don't squat down all the way, but then all of a sudden you do, like heavy. Yeah. So, you know, there's a high risk of injury if we're not smart and safe with kind of how we open up the new motion, mm -hmm. right? So obviously I want the full motion, but if you haven't trained in it in a long time, we got to make sure we get back to that. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of times like after this, what I'd like to do is do some rotator cuff work. Mm -hmm. You know, since you have a healthy shoulder, I'd want to train it kind of in, um, you know, unstable area. Yeah. So we do some 90-90 internal external rotation, mm -hmm. um, maybe do some dynamic stuff with the shoulder, and then even just some strengthening overhead. Yeah. You know, just and kind of lock in. And that's working in that new range. Exactly, okay. exactly. Okay. Yeah, even even if we did like some overhead squats with a band pulling you forward or working some low trap, just kind of working some new ranges. Yeah. It's kind of the goal. Well, Dr. Hart, thank you yep. so much. Mm -hmm. I feel better with the shoulder, mm -hmm. the restriction, the range yeah. of motion, and mobility was it's crazy. Was unbelievable. It's awesome. yeah, yeah. Especially with the fact that we didn't even have to do any. Like didn't, said, didn't stretch it. Didn't yeah, shoot, didn't have nothing to crazy. It. So I want to yeah. appreciate you. Of course, great to have uh, you. Great to have you. Where can the people find yeah. you? Because they need yeah, to find yeah. you immediately. Yeah, right, where right? can they find? Where yeah. we located? Social yeah. media is what you got. Yeah. For yeah. So, so I'm on Facebook. Uh, I'm also on Instagram. Instagram's the easiest. Uh, J. Hart. That's H A R T. Uh, pretty easy to find me there. You can uh, message me on there, shoot me an email, whatever's easier. Uh, I'm located just off of Donald Ross and Military, so if you have any questions, you can reach out to me there. Uh, you know, Donald will have all my information as well, so whatever you guys need, let me know. And we can kind of go from there. Guys, get here yeah. immediately. Yep. DRP family, love you. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Always. It's been a pleasure. Always good to have you guys. Appreciate it, man. Yep. Thank you. Come on.